All right, well, thanks folks for coming out here today. I really appreciate having supporters, having Paul Santinello come out and be a part of uh, organizing today. Of course, really appreciate the station for having us here, uh, hosting us. And the reason, you know, we're out here today, obviously, is to continue the tour after the kickoff, a very successful kickoff a few nights ago in my hometown of Whitman for the U.S. Senate. Uh, very fortunate to have a lot of friends and family, uh, hundreds and hundreds of folks that uh, have been working with me on either my campaign uh, when running for state representative or uh, the ballot question in 2014 where we successfully repealed the gas tax uh, indexing where we saved taxpayers two billion dollars you know and that was a, a big win and it, that's again one of the reasons we wanted to come out to a gas station to make sure that people are aware of the fact that i've been working for them for a long time up on beacon hill i want to continue that work down in washington dc putting the agenda of the people of massachusetts first that's the most important work that i can be doing down as your U.S. Senator. We don't need a U.S. Senator that continues to basically hope that the uh, administration down in D.C. fails and with it the hopes of the people who wanted to see change down in Washington. We don't need a U.S. Senator who's writing books in office making a personal profit while at the same time you know not delivering for Massachusetts and we certainly don't need a senator who wants to be reelected just to spend two more years running for president instead of serving the people of Massachusetts. I've been working since I got onto Beacon Hill trying to help the people of my district, whatever the issues are, whether it was the foreclosure crisis that they were dealing with, whether it was the gas tax and indexing where they were going to have more of their household income taken away, whether it was going to be what they pumped into their car, whether it was going to be the goods they purchased that were increased uh, in cost because of transportation increases, or it was going to be property taxes going up because of all the uh, municipal taxes uh, paid for school buses, ambulances, fire trucks, uh, police cruisers, all that would have gone into your property taxes. Again, saving pet taxpayers uh, money uh, was one of the most important things. We overcame $3 million spent against us. We were able to win 53 to 47, and we outperformed Governor Baker uh, by 50,000 votes. So it was a tremendous win, and it was the people of the state that actually delivered that. We collected 120,000 signatures with the, the help of volunteers, uh, not paid nobody was paid to do that everybody thought that we could never get the signatures we got the signatures they didn't think we could win the issue we won the issue and that's because i was able to get out and go across the state talk to folks uh, talk to the radio and tv stations newspapers make sure they were aware of what was at stake that beacon hill wanted to have a tax go up every year automatically without a vote and that's not the way we do things in massachusetts you need representative votes if you're going to have tax increases and the other thing, too, is we proved that the transportation uh, Department of Transportation was spending four times the national average. They need to make sure they tighten their belt before they ask taxpayers to spend more money. Then we found out in 2015 the Olympics wanted to come to Massachusetts. That was going to be at least $10 billion in overruns because that's the average overruns of the last five Olympics. London went from $5 billion to $15 billion. Montreal, the 76 Olympics, just finished paying off their bonds a few years ago. The IOC was going to require that the taxpayers of Massachusetts were going to be on the hook for any of the overruns for those Olympics. And Deval Patrick, the former governor, was getting paid $7,500 a day to try to sell this boondoggle to the state of Massachusetts. I filed in the House chamber language to prevent taxpayers from having to fund those overruns. And when that failed, I filed language with Evan Falchuk, who had run for governor as an independent. His team and our gas tax team got together and said, we're not going to let this happen to the taxpayers of Massachusetts. We filed language that ballot question uh, uh, for the ballot question to prevent taxpayers for the overruns. And in a week, the uh, Boston 2024 folks decided to pull their bid. And we ended up saving taxpayers a huge headache down the road with all those costs that were going to come down the pike, like big dig number two. So now I want to take that work ethic down to Washington, D.C., make sure that I put the agenda of the people of Massachusetts first. That's what this should be all about, trying to make sure that our borders are secure, that people coming into our country, into our state, uh, are here legally, and make sure that the resources of our state don't go to people who are here uh, you know, in sanctuary cities that are draining the, the money away from education, housing, and uh, you know, money that could be used towards veterans coming back home. That's where that money should be going towards. The other thing, too, is we need to make sure that we respect those veterans when they come back from service, give them the resources they need, fix the VA hospitals, and uh, also respect law enforcement. We really need to have a senator that, that believes that law enforcement is trying to help people. You know, our senior senator went to an NAACP dinner a few months ago and said that it, 
law enforcement that continues to terrorize the African-American community. We need people to unite in this country, not continually be divided. That's what this is about. We need someone who is going to put that uh, first, be, be a job senator. And we certainly know that, you know, in Springfield, we need the work. We need American companies to get an advantage so we're not losing uh, overseas, all this, uh, all this economic loss overseas uh, to China. Um, so I'm looking forward to making sure that we can grow jobs help small businesses uh, do better, help with healthcare costs, because that's obviously hurting them and trying to hire people. This today is a chance to speak to the people in Springfield, to let them know about this campaign. I'm hoping that if you're not already a part of the team, that they'll go to our website, dealforsenate.com, to join us. And I'm looking forward to a 15-month campaign where we really let people know they have a, an, a, an alternative to someone who is not putting their uh, priorities first and someone who uh, has been serving them up on Beacon Hill will continue to serve them in Washington, D.C. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today.